السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ نحمد و نصلی علی رسول کریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم قل ان کنتم تحبون اللہ فتبعونی یحببکم اللہ و یغفر لکم ذنوبکم واللہ غفور الرحیم وقال رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس أجمعين أو كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our nourisher, our sustainer, our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the Rabb and the Lord of the Alameen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has sent Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم as his final messenger as we already in this month of Rabi al Awal, and just like how when we leave the month of Safar, just like how when we leave the month of Safar, enter into a new Islamic month, and after the Maghrib today, we enter into the third of Rabi al Awal, it reminds us that yes, indeed, if this is the month that a blessed Master Nabi Muhammad وسلم, was born, and yes, indeed. Even though there will be lots of conferences and discussions about the life and seerah and personality of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we also need to ask ourselves with the many of the challenges that the Ummah is facing, how much have we blatantly violated the injunctions of Allah or we have ignored the beautiful sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so now there is a great call that we need to display great love for nabi muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so there is no doubt about his status his his personality how almighty allah ta'ala had on that very special night a night where he was taken up to the seven heavens in the court of allah can you imagine in to be invited the one who came as rahmatun lil alamin as allah ta'ala reminds us in the quran wama arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin and we have not sent thee save as a mercy for alamin last week only i was there in a very amazing beautiful place the place which is called bosnia herzegovina and as we were able to travel to many different parts of the great cities where we visit places like Mostar and you see and you learn about how a great challenge that the people had faced during the years of 1993 to 1995. When we are in there in Mostar and you look and you see those masajid that are standing there with those very tall beautiful minarets climbing up onto one of those masajid, the, one of the oldest masajid there in the city of Mostar. And to look into the Naratva River and further having a beautiful view of the Mostar Bridge, that bridge which is dating back to the Ottoman ruler Suleiman, Sultan Suleiman. Now when you see that, you know, end of 14th century, beginning of 15th century, that these and they are masajid that are built over 400 years ago amazingly you get to reflect and think and takes you back in time you feel that you're walking in the streets of jerusalem you feel that yes how is it that there was a time uninterrupted for a people even if you take the year 1463 when the ottoman or when it came uh, was conquered by the Ottoman even from that time anything that was built after that date we reflect and think that here we are 2019 and when you go back in time taking yourself in history in the beginning of the 15th century and you see those tall beautiful minarets in the city of Mostar not only there wherever you go in almost every city as you are driving as you go through the cities and the towns like a place called Stolac, very close to the border of Croatia. You get to learn and learn about a place and as we also were performing or had our salah, we were able to 
perform it behind the resident imam. We learn again about the plight and the condition of a people during those very challenging, difficult years, the years where there were killings in that region, in that part of the world, in Eastern Europe, where we speak about the Balkans. We are thinking, how is it possible that when a people were so much, not only do we speak about integrated, you could say even so much assimilated, you would not be able to identify or distinguish or draw a distinction between a Serbian, a Croat, or a Bosniak. You would not know the difference. That is how much was the assimilation but see how the condition had changed during those period of time. One may ask so many a question, what led to those whom united the Serbs and the Croats against the Muslims to exterminate them? What a sad reality that we learned that even the masjid was so much totally demolished and destroyed that they would park the cars over it, no trace even from the foundations. Now, if there is no check on a people whom create mischief in the land, then think about how Almighty Allah Ta'ala reminds us in the Quran, وَلَوْلَا دَفْعُ اللَّهِ النَّاسِ بَعْدُهُمْ Meaning, if there was not a people to check on another people, what would have been the consequence? لَهُدِّمَتْ صَوَامِعُ وَبِيعُ وَمَسَاجِرُ يُذْكَرُ فِيهَا اسْمُ اللَّهِ كَثِيرًا وَلَيَنْصُرَنَّ اللَّهِ مَنْ يَنْصُرُهُ so if there were not a people to check on another people, then you would have found this reality and this consequence that there would be a people, sawami'u and masajid and the churches or the places of worship on the synagogue, that also would have been demolished and destroyed. This is the reality of how we, when we are in Sarajevo, you know, one can show you and uh, many of those images at another time when we were walking in the streets of Sarajevo. We could not even imagine that this was a place 1,425 days under a complete siege. You know, we think about Kashmir and Kashmir is bleeding and we think about how is a people when now living in that condition, in that place, if there is a total lockdown and a people losing their autonomy, a people losing their you know, right to self-determination, the revoking of Article 370, but the challenge that the people had in Sarajevo was 1,425 days. So we learned on our visit that just like how when we visit and we enter and we pray in the Masaji Legazi Husrov Beg and to see the tall minaret and to able to see the inside and uh, it takes you back in time. You feel as if though you are in the 15th century. You feel as if though you're walking in the streets of Jerusalem. That is the great legacy that the Muslim Ummah has lost. And by visiting and by walking and seeing, not only do you get to understand the beauty of the old cities and takes you back in the time of the Ottoman period, taking you in the, t in, the, in the 15th century, you get to understand that yes indeed, just like a how we take our peace, we take our aman for granted, it was the same reality for the people that were living there. Unimaginable, it would not even cross the mind that a time will come that what triggered the First World War the assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand in that city of Sarajevo. That now you're going back to the 1914, and here we see again we had the World War I, and then you know what happened in World War II. See how many millions and millions had lost their lives. So the sad reality that even though the world had witnessed so much devastation and killing, yet indeed, Man, by nature, he is arrogant, full of pride. He creates mischief and bloodshed in the land. And when there is a clinging and attachment to the worldly matters of this dunya, when there is no fear that there is a life of accountability and hisab, when, when there is no 
really concern and worry to emulate the seerah and life of the Prophet Sallallahu then there is no better an example than to take and to look into the beautiful teachings of our beloved Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who came as Rahmatul Lil Alameen mercy for the whole of mankind and we have so many great examples in the life and seer of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how he the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he is giving in his life you know we only think about the Rabi Al-Awwal is seerah we should really not only think that this is you know we wake up and we talk about seerah in this month of Rabi Al-Awwal if it is the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we do not celebrate the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you may have a date called Miladun Nabi and Mawlidun Nabi we do not have in our teachings in our seerah in the examples of the life of the companions for example whom amongst ourselves can even reach the level of anyone from amongst the lowest from the companions can you even reach the level the level of the tabi'een walladheena tabi'uhum bi ihsan allah is only pleased with all of the companions radiyallahu anhum wa radu'an yes we may reflect and think that just when we abandon the, the sunnah and we don't get the entire seerah in the quran we do not find the seerah this is the books where you find books written about the seerah and life of the personality of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his shama'il his characteristics his features but we don't get all the seerah in the quran so the quran yes indeed allah reminds us wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim that you have a very high standard of character allah ta'ala reminds us in the quran laqad kana lakum fi rasulillah uswatan hasana there is for you in the messenger of allah an excellent example liman kana yarju allah for those who are hoping to meet allah life era after wal yawm al akhir wa dhakara allah kathira and remember allah in abundance so when we want to focus and remember and reflect on the seerah and life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and also at the same time see what has brought about the downfall when the what has led to the weakness even in the ottoman period what leads to the weakness it is very simple and clear the moment we start having and making tanafus you know we start chasing so much so after the dunya we abandon the teaching of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we don't reflect on his seerah and his life and hence yes indeed just like how we know the names of so many of those whom we take as our heroes whether it is from the pop stars or the football players how much do we have and knowledge about the names also of even if you take that you know we speak about the the uncles of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the sons of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the daughters of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam why prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also mentioned the ashar mubashshara bil janna those the ten who were given glad tidings of jannah so we need to look into the seerah and life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam know his seerah because his entire seerah we have not only from the time that allah ta'ala had chose for him to be a prophet and a messenger but we even know the condition in islamic in pre-islamic arabia even before the birth of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so much so that we even have so much details about the seer of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the time of the birth of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the day he was born and see when the person amina gives birth to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and see how much of barakah and blessing there is also for halima saadia the one who suckled the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam see how what was and what was the habit and what was from the culture of, uh, you know for those who, who would suckle the babies and infants and what was the benefit that they will bring to those whom uh, they had suckled and all those details of how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he now with halima saadia and when he is returned to the mother and when does the father pass away all and who takes care of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uncle abu talib how does the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam grow up as a shepherd 
How does he go and accompany his uncle on trading? How does the Prophet وسلم, take care of the tijara and business of Khadija عنها, who becomes the wife of the Prophet وسلم, and she is 40 years of age, he is 25 years of age. See uh, the example that we have in the life, in the seerah of the Prophet وسلم, that from the age of 25, Right up until the age of 40, there are how many years? 15 years. 15 years pass by. That means he is the husband of Khadija radiallahu anha. Can you imagine that when we are studying about the seerah and life of the Prophet وسلم, then the day when Allah Ta'ala brought down or sent Jibreel alayhi salam with the revelation and the wahi with the verse of the Holy Quran Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaqa Where was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam? Where was he on that very night, uh, night, on that very occasion? Where is that Jabal and Nur, that mountain of light? What was he doing in seclusion in Ghari Hira? Why was he in contemplation? Why was he you know, in the reflection, what was the condition of the people there in Arabia, in those places, in that area, in that location, we speak about the deserts of Arabia. Can you imagine when the first wahi and the revelation comes from the heavens and Jibreel alayhi salam meeting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, ikra with the verse of the Holy Quran, read in the name of your Lord who creates. Now that is an amazing part of the seerah and life of the Prophet wasallam. That the first person after this incident, after the wahi, who was the first person that the Prophet wasallam goes to was his beloved wife Khadija radiallahu anha. So we reflect on the verse of the Quran. Ya ayyuhal muzzammil, ya ayyuhal muddassir. See how it is connecting us with that amazing great journey of the Prophet وسلم, from the time he is born right up until the age of 40. Here is the beloved messenger of Allah when he reaches the age of 40 and from that age from 40 years till the age of 63 for 23 years he وسلم, is receiving the wahi, is receiving the revelation so when we want to really benefit from the seerah and life of the Prophet وسلم, and we relate to our condition and the places and the, that we normally would visit and see we have examples even how he وسلم, is giving rights to the animals, rights even to the prisoners, rights even to the innocent, the civilians, you know, even in the time of war. You found that he came as a rahma, as a mercy for alameen. We have not sent these save as a mercy for all of humanity, all of mankind. When we again think about here is the final messenger, the final prophet of Allah. Makana Muhammadun Aba Ahadim Mir Rijalikum Wala Kirasulallahi wa khatam al Nabiyin. Muhammad is not the father of any one of you men. He is the messenger of Allah and he is the Khatam al Nabiyin, the seal of the Prophet. Ma kana Muhammadun aba ahdim rijalikum. So if he is the final messenger and if he came with the Quran, which is the book which Almighty Allah Ta'ala is, is preserving and will preserve right up until Qiyamah. Even though we may and we know that the Messenger وسلم, has passed away, has left the dunya, yet we find that there is there's so much of passion and love that the people have. That even you have the book Michael Hart in his book, The Hundred Most Influential, Most Influential Person in Human History. He ranks Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as number one. There are so many comments you have about the personality of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the likes of George Bernard Shaw and so many others have written about detailed account of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa 
that from the age of 40, he, is, he received the message and the wahi, and here we are, when he passes away, 63 years of age, and there it is in the 11th year after hijrah, subhanallah, we see from after the demise of the Prophet wasallam, we have the time, the golden time and the period of the Khulafa, Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman Ali radiallahu anhum, and see during their time what great legacy they have left behind for the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. that today wherever we are, there are people whom are still reverting and turning and entering into Islam. It is only yesterday when I met this over ninth, almost I would say, yes, he's born in 1931 and you know, when somebody is almost over 85 years of age, at such a time in a person she has left or she has entered into Islam about two decades ago, but you could see the great love and you could see that when their heart is illuminated with Iman, how firm a person is because yes indeed, those who have embraced and those who have entered into Islam from the time of the Prophet وسلم, we see that it is still, a, you know, it is still for the many in all parts of the world, wherever they may be, they have heard that there is a personality by the name of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when we want to learn about our deen and when we see the Ummah wherever we may be, we do not take our examples from a people who are following the beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because there are many a places where a people have left Islam so much so that the only thing remaining for them about Islam is the name. And there are many who have the Quran and the only thing they have about the Quran is the Quran is existing only in writing. It's like saying there will come a time لا يبقى من الإسلام إلا اسمه ولا من القرآن إلا رسمه we have witnessed and we have seen that there was a period of time that a people had left so much the beautiful teachings, examples of the Prophet wasallam, and that is what I had seen in the place where we visited Bosnia Herzegovina, which was part of the Ottoman period, Ottoman rule. It was in that place where a people not were so much integrated but assimilated so much so that you could not draw a distinction between a Bosniak Muslim, a Serb or a Croat, whether it's Christian Orthodox or you know you have the Serb Orthodox Christian or the Catholic Croats who are the Catholic from the Catholic Church and you, even if you find so much assimilation, yet when it came to that time when those who had united and the only reason they attacked the Muslim is because the person was a Muslim. Even though there was no sign or even you they could say there was no religious identity attached to the Muslim. And hence, when we visit in our time now, we see that we do not know that there comes a time we cannot understand. It's like saying when Almighty Allah Ta'ala reminds us in the Quran, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً that is a very powerful reminder that only Allah knows. I know what you do not know. So we are maybe thinking and we cannot understand and we are shocked. But this is not the first time that so much of killings this happened only in our lifetime where we have heard and we have seen you know, when you see the many those who visited Srebrenica and know about those graves, 7, 000, over 7,000, almost 8,000 that have been identified and buried there in that area which is known as Republic of Shribska. Remember, the time that a people live in the centuries, you know, if you even go back to the time of the, you know, we had uh, the Abbasid dynasty or the Umayyad dynasty before that, and even if you look into the time of the Ottoman period or even during the time of the Mughals and the Tatars and the Crusaders, all this is a stark reminder 
that man in every period of time he how does he behave why is there so much of killing we cannot understand and here is the great example that we have in the personality of the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he came as rahmatul lil alamin so when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away we have a verse in the quran where allah ta'ala says wa ma muhammadun illa rasul qad khalat min qablihi rusul fa in mata aw qutilan qalabtum ala aqabikum wa man yanqalib ala aqibayhi fala yadurru allah shay'a muhammad is only a messenger of allah messengers have passed away before him if he dies or he is killed are you going to turn your heels away from him wa man yanqalib ala aqibayhi and whomsoever is going to turn away from him he will not in the least cause harm to allah so if we understand that from the age of 40 right up until the age of 63 for those 23 years we have the wahi we have the revelation we have the question about when we speak about that we have to have love for the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, what does it mean that a person what do we have when we say that we have to have and hold on to the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we have the sayings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we have the actions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we have also the tacit approval ma udifa whatever has been attributed to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam min qawlin wa fi'lin wa amalin aw taqreerin so it is his statements and this is where we have to question and ask ourselves that we are in this time where we are concerned and worried about the rise of islamophobia where we are concerned and worried that yes indeed we may be holding on to our identity but we at the same time know that yes there are places in other parts of the world their identity is being snatched away so this is where we have to ask ourselves if we say that we have love for rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what is the sign that the person has love for rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is as the saying goes alamatu hubbillah hubbul quran that the sign that you have love for allah is that you have love for the quran wa alamatu hubbir rasul hubbus sunnah and the sign that you have love for the messenger is that you have love for the sunnah but if we do not understand what is the sunnah then how are we going to display our love for rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so we hope that you will keep watching and joining me again after the break where we discuss some aspects of the statements of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and take that as important reflections until after the break assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh